Welcome back to Cinemation Movie Recaps. Today, I show you the movie 2012 from 2009. Beware of spoilers. The film begins in India. The year is 2009. An American geologist and scientific advisor to the U.S. president named Adrian Helmsley visits his friend, astrophysicist Satnam Surutani. Satnam discovered a unique type of neutrinos from the solar flare that heats up the Earth's core. Based on this discovery, he travels to Washington, D.C. to present it to White House Chief of Staff Carl Anhuser. At first, Adrian is ignored because Carl is having a party, but he eventually gets noticed by him. After Adrian reports the latest scientific revelation, Carl immediately sets up an appointment with U.S. President Thomas Wilson. In 2010, Thomas Wilson, along with other world leaders, begins to develop a secret project to ensure the survival of humanity. Meanwhile, the G8, a group of eight nations, also raises funds to finance the secret project. Together with China, the G8 is building nine modern arcs in the Himalayas near Chouming, Tibet, each capable of housing up to 100,000 people. To finance this massive project, they are selling tickets for $1 billion each to the rich and elite around the world. In 2011, valuable works of art will be brought into the arcs. The art expert and the eldest daughter of the U.S. President, Laura Wilson, is told only that the valuable works of art were brought to the Alps for conservation. In 2012, a news report discusses the prediction of the Mayan calendar. In Manhattan Beach, California-based science fiction writer Jackson Curtis is a part-time chauffeur for a Russian billionaire named Yuri Karpov. Jackson is visiting his former wife and medical student Kate Curtis and their children Noah and Lily. Kate and her children currently live with her boyfriend, plastic surgeon Gordon Silverman. Jackson takes Noah and Lily camping in Yellowstone National Park. When Jackson, Noah, and Lily reach their destination, they see that the campsite has been fenced off. Jackson and the kids are caught by the U.S. Army while trying to jump the fence and are taken to Adrian who is studying the geology of the park. Adrian is quite overwhelmed to meet his favorite sci-fi author. After they are released at the U.S. compound, Jackson, Noah, and Lily meet conspiracy theorist and radio host Charlie Frost. Charlie's radio show is about the end of the world. Charlie leads Jackson to his van and shows him his animated video about Charles Hapgood's theory. The polar shift and the Mesoamerican calendar predict that the year 2012 will bring them an extreme phenomenon that could be the end of the world. Charlie also revealed that every person who has tried to proclaim the end of the world so far has been killed. To Jackson, Charlie is just a crazy person. Everything Charlie said is just his imagination because there is no concrete news about the subject of the end of the world. At this point, the government is still hiding facts from the nation. After Jackson and the children are back from camping, he hurriedly went to Mr. Karpov's house to pick up his twin sons Alec and Oleg Karpov. Meanwhile, the town is in chaos, but Jackson, always in a hurry, is too busy to notice. With the sudden departure of Mr. Karpov and the appearance of the twins, however, Jackson realizes that Charlie's theories are true and finally registers the events unfolding around him. He immediately hires a pilot, Jackson's family, and Gordon escape in their limousine from a sudden earthquake that shakes California and race to their plane. Unfortunately, the pilot Jackson hired has died, but it turns out Gordon knows a little something about flying. Jackson convinces Gordon to fly the private Cessna 340A, even though Gordon claims he has no flying experience. Gordon protests, but he has no choice because the whole country is falling apart. Jackson and his family fly to Yellowstone with Gordon to get a map from Charlie showing the location of Ark. It is not easy to find the map because Charlie is not in his van because he was trying to finish his radio show. It took a while for Jackson to find it. Charlie dies during his broadcast. The group flies to Las Vegas because they have to change to a bigger plane to reach China. In Las Vegas, they meet Jackson's boss Yuri Karpov who is there with his twins, his girlfriend Tamara, and their pilot Sasha. Sasha needs a co-pilot since they are traveling in a huge plane, an Antonov 500. 
So Gordon acts as Sasha's co-pilot, which convinces Jury to take Jackson and his family to China. The plane is loaded with luxury cars. Jackson and Yuri have the opportunity to have a serious conversation with each other. And this is where Jackson learns that the seats on the Ark were sold for a billion dollars apiece. Sasha said that they need to refuel in Hawaii. Unfortunately, Hawaii is engulfed in burning lava, so they can't land there. Adrian, Laura, and Carl are aboard Air Force One on their way to the Ark without President Wilson, who has stayed in Washington, D.C. The president believes that he must be with his people to the end, even if it means dying with them. The entire country in the U.S. was hit by a mega tsunami. The vice president died from the ash cloud, while most people drowned from the tsunamis. Since the presidential line of succession is broken, Carl appoints himself as acting commander-in-chief. Meanwhile, Adrian's father, Harry Helmsley, a singer and musician, is on a cruise ship with his friend and fellow musician. Adrian called his father and told him about the arcs and the truth about why earthquakes and tsunamis are happening all over the world. This makes Carl angry with Adrian for telling his father a closely guarded secret. When Adrian and Laura reach the arcs, they are surprised to find that most of the people in the Ark are rich and famous. Carl explains that they only sold the tickets to billionaires to cover the cost of the secret project, so most people can't board the Arks. When Jackson's group reaches China, the plane runs out of gas. Sasha decides to keep the plane flying while the Curtis family, Gordon, Mr. Karpov, the twins, and Tamara escape in a Bentley stored in the cargo hold. Sasha died when the plane crashed into a cliff. They are noticed by the Chinese Air Force helicopters. One of the soldiers asks them if they have ARC tickets, to which Yuri showed that he and his twins have them. They are accepted and taken to the ARCs, while the Curtis family, Gordon, and Tamara are abandoned. Back to Adrian, when he entered his cabin, he said that the room could fit 10 people. Satnam called him and said they were still on the Nampan Plateau and said goodbye to Adrian. Adrian was frustrated at what happened to his friend. He immediately ran to the bridge and found out that they had 26 minutes to go. Outside the Ark, all land areas were wiped out by a mega tsunami, including the cruise ship Adrian's father is on. While Jackson and his family are looking for help, they see Nima with his grandparents on their way to Ark before entering the gate. They have a little conflict with Tenzin because he won't let them in. According to Tenzin, there are only a limited number of people who can be admitted there. However, they solve the problem in no time because they are all friendly people. They enter the area where the animals were kept. As they are not registered as passengers of the Ark, Yuri notices that the gates of the Ark would soon close. He senses that most of them will be left behind, so he influences the others to force their way into the Ark. On the other hand, Jackson and Tenzin's family were on their way into the Ark. They also see the many people rushing to the Ark. Carl convinces the other heads of state to launch the Arks because of the threat of a mega tsunami in the Himalayas. Carl orders the loading gates closed, even though many people are waiting outside. Adrian and Laura worry about the people they would leave behind. Adrian dares to talk to the other heads of state, but Carl hits back. Adrian asks the captain and the other Arks to start the new future humanity without blood on their hands. Adrian also mentions the quote, the moment we stop fighting for each other, we lose our humanity. Everyone is arguing now because they have little time left. Laura agreed with Adrian's point of view. She even said, if my father were here, he would open the gates. The G8 decided to open the gates to everyone. When Captain Michael announces that they will open the gates, everyone is happy. But there is a problem with the whereabouts of Jackson and his family. Since they are not registered passengers, they got in at a different entrance, in the aisles of the cargo gates. Noah got to the entrance, but unfortunately, Gordon and Tenzin fell into the rolling gears of the loading gate, along with the impact wrench. Jackson manages to pull Tenzin out, although his legs are badly injured. Unfortunately, Gordon dies because the gears roll over him. The impact wrench gets stuck in the gears, so the gates cannot be fully opened. Everyone who is outside takes the opportunity to go into the Ark. 
ARC-4 is now loaded. Carl immediately orders the gates to be locked. Yuri was stopped by the stampeding people, but he made sure his twins got on board. Yuri falls into the deep ravine in the process. Meanwhile, Carl is now angry with Adrian and Laura. He even makes fun of Laura and Adrian because they will kill everyone in their attempt to be human. They have only one minute left before impact. The mega tsunami hits the ark due to the cargo door not being sealed. It begins to fill with water. Another arc is now about to hit arc 4, in which Adrian, Laura, and Jackson's family are on board. Another problem is that they are drifting toward the north face of Mount Everest, and unless they can start the arc's engines to steer away, they will not be able to survive the impact. Unfortunately, the gates must be fully closed to activate the engine. Jackson's family is in danger of drowning from the flooding of the ark. They manage to save Lily and finally meet Adrian. Adrian tells Jackson about the problem with the gate and explains that something is stuck in the locking mechanism. He says it would be a suicide mission to fix it since the hydraulic chambers are now flooded. Jackson decides to do it, even though it is very dangerous. He says goodbye to his family and set out to free the gears. No sneaks away and follows his father. They manage to remove the impact wrench from the hydraulics. Jackson can return safely to his family. The loading gate closes, the engine starts, and you successfully prevent the collision. Adrian asks Laura if she wants to go out with him. As for the other passengers, they will have a chance to see the outside world after the chaos. The arcs are scheduled to land in the Drakesburg Mountains of KwaZulu Natal in Africa, which are now the highest roof in the world and are called the Cape of Good Hope.